So solution. I guess I write in cursive or something. Um, so we'll start by finding the characteristic or auxiliary equation. So one fourth m squared. We do use some cursive in this class. I do at least. Uh, when we get to Laplace transforms, I use cur yeah the cursive letters, cursive L, cursive S. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use cursive, but I, I do it. It's fun. This is cursive L, by the way, in case you're curious. Beautiful, right? That's like I want to get a shirt with that on it. Huh? <laughs> oh man, I hate driving. Okay, so this is this is uh, this should factor. <laughs> this is this is uh, parentheses one half m. I, I think I think it's this. I'm taking a chance here with points. Let's see. This if you square this, you get this. One times one is this, and then this times this times two is that. It's right. Okay. <laughs> okay, I wasn't sure. <laughs> so set it equal to zero. So you have one half m plus one equals zero. Right, because you take the square root, or, or you set each factor equal to zero, or just one factor, then subtract one. What an uncomfortable problem. You know what we could have done to make this easier? We multiply by four. Why didn't we do that? Yeah, I don't know. Multiply by two. It's too late. Missed opportunities. M equals negative two. <laughs> What's the multiplicity of this root? Two. two. Yeah, it's from this. All right, multiplicity two. So if you if you mess this part up, I was just thinking about what Ryan asked, like, what if you mess up part A? It's okay. It's not it's not a disaster. You know, like it doesn't carry over to part B and C so much. So it's not too bad. Although you do want to get this right because it's easy points. Now we can write the solution down, so y sub c. Let's just c1e e to the negative 2x plus c2. What, what goes here? x. x, yeah, because of the repetition. x, x, e to the negative 2x. You notice how these are easier in this section. In 4, 3, the, the part a was harder because that was the whole section. In this section, they're all relatively easy. So that's... That's our, our homogeneous solution, our complementary function, or complementary um, solution. All right, part B. Let's do it. Part B. Part B. Find the form of YP. Form of YP. So when we're looking for the form of YP, um, you want to mainly just look at this piece first, right? The right-hand side of, of your DE. So let's do that. So solution. So our initial guess will just be AX squared plus BX. Is that it, or is there more? Would it be minus BX? No, it's plus. What's missing? The C. If you put minus BX, um, I'll, I'll have to mark it right, even, even if I don't want to, because it'll work. Yeah, because you'll, you'll, you'll get the same answer at the end. Constant constants. the constants. So like, let's say B was 5. In your problem, your B will be negative 5, and it'll work out. Mm -hmm. So if you mess up sometimes, I have to mark it right, even if I don't want to. It's painful. A little bit, not that bad. Now you look here and you look at the terms of YC. Is there repetition in this case? Between these and these? No, there's not. So that's it. Easy, easy points, right? That's it. Really simple. Sometimes that happens. Right? These are these are exponentials. Yeah. In order for there to be repetition of that second term C2 X E to the negative two X, it would have to explicitly be in Y. E would have to have yes. x e to the negative 2x. Yeah, or even just an e to the negative 2x. Okay. Either or would be repetition. But just an x would be repetition. Just x. If you had something with like, that would be repetition with this. Okay. Right, and then you then you'd have to have x squared. If you had and yp, if you had, ah, if you had this and yp, then yeah, then you have to, you have to put an x squared here also because x won't be enough. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Part D C, it's fine YP. Fine YP. I'm glad we're doing another one. I was thinking about going to the next section, but then um, I realized that there would have been too much. So next section's one thing. It's like I'm gonna give you the steps and then we're done. We're just gonna do the problems. It's only seven homework questions, too. Um, okay, so now we just have to take the derivative of this thing and plug it into the DE. So I'm gonna write it again, YP, just because AX squared plus bx plus c, 
YP prime. So this will be um, 2ax plus b, so 2ax plus b. And then yp double prime is just 2a, right, 2a. What a great marker. I'm going like, to hold on to this all day. But, but by the end of my next class, it'll be done, though. They, they wear out quick. Miss chalkboards. Nope. What do we do with these? What do we, what do we, what do we, where do they go? To the DE, yeah, so plug into DE. Let me do it up here, so plug into DE, plug into the DE. So it's going in here, so 1 fourth Y double prime. So it'll be 1 fourth uh, 2A plus Y prime. So Y prime is this, 2AX plus B. So plus 2AX plus B. And then Y is just this, the AX squared plus BX plus C. So plus ax squared plus bx plus c, and that's equal to the right-hand side of our, of our de, so x squared minus 3x, so x squared minus 3x. This thing seems pretty easy, actually. I thought this was probably the hardest part of this problem was the factoring here, because I didn't multiply by 4. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I don't know if anything simplifies here. I think, I think we can clean it up a little bit. This is really just 1 half a, right? So 1 half a plus 2ax plus b plus ax squared. I'm just rewriting all of it just to, just to, uh, just to clean this up. Just 1 half, that's all I did. I just rewrote it all just to put 1 half. So you can just erase it and put 1 half or rewrite it all. <laughs> So, I don't like erasing in class, because if I do this, then when you go home, you won't know what happened, right? Like, what happened? Like, oh, did he skip a step? So, um, so I forgot what goes there. It, ah, no, what, what goes here? One fourth? See? See? I didn't even know what it was, and I just erased it. <laughs> so, all right, let's start with the x squared terms. Let's equate coefficients. x squared terms. So on the left-hand side, the coefficient of x squared is what? what would, a. Good job. A. What's her name? Alyssa. Alyssa. Good, Alyssa. And on the right-hand side, it's 1. Right? So it's just 1. So a is equal to 1. Very good. Beautiful, right? What a beautiful method. Like a is 1. Done. It's just awesome. It's just immediate. Um, a equals 1. Just works out so nice. Then just go down the line. So x terms now. So x terms. So it looks like we'll have 2a here for the first x term. So 2a, 2a um, plus b. So 2a plus b, 2a plus b. And that's equal to negative 3, negative 3. So again, the x terms, 2a plus b equals negative 3. Nice problem. I like this problem a lot. Like, it's really like clean, it works out really pretty. Again, the worst part is probably this, which is kind of strange. Usually that's not the worst part. A is 1. Let's go ahead and plug it in. So we get... Yeah, negative 2. Oh, subtract 2. Oh, Duncan. Oh. Yeah. It's added, you have to subtract it. Subtract two, subtract two, you get negative three minus two, so you get negative five. Because mm -hmm. it's two times one plus b. Yeah, it's a one. Yeah, because a is one, it's a one, it's a one. Yeah, that's what you got to say here. <laughs> so, so then, yeah, so minus two, minus two, so it's negative five. B is negative 5. And then we can go to the, what's below the, the x terms? <laughs> the constant terms, right? The constant terms. The constant terms. Constant terms. B plus C. B plus C. Uh, almost, almost, almost. Also, what else? No. 1 half A. 1 half A plus B plus C. Good. And that's, 
So it's all of it, right? So it's one half a plus b plus c, and it's equal to zero. Go ahead, let's equal to zero. Now, was, I'm glad we did another one. It was worth doing. This is a really good example, I think, because it's not, it's not like super convoluted, and it's a really nice example of, of equating coefficients. You have three constants that you're adding, basically, and you're setting it equal to zero, so it's really nice. Uh, I guess we know a, a is one, so it's one half times one, b is five, and then c is c. This is 10 halves. One half minus 10 halves is nine halves, plus 4.5. I'll leave it as a fraction though, but you can, you can write 4.5. So c is nine halves, or 4.5. Mm -hmm. We're not done though for part, for part c. What do we have to do with these now? Plug them into what? Into YP. YP. Yeah, so you plug them into YP, which is over here, right? So I'll do it up here. So, so the answer would be YP equals A, oh, uh, it's here. A is 1, so X squared. Um, B was negative 5, so negative 5X. And then C was 9 halves, so 9 halves. This looks really familiar, this problem. I think maybe it's been on a test or something. The nine halves is, is like reminiscent or some, of a test. The last step is to write the general solution, so gen SOL. And so you just basically add them up. So you take, you take your, y, your YC, so C1, C1 e to the negative 2x plus C2x e to the negative 2x, and then plus x squared minus 5x plus nine halves. So this would be the actual answer at the very end. You just take the YC, which is here, and, and you add it to, to the YP, which, which is here. So, wasn't so bad. Next time when you come in, well, any questions? Any questions?